Hi, Susan here from the RV Venture, and today, um, today, the day I post this, it should be Thursday, January 2nd, and I really want to post a video every week, preferably on Thursdays for 2020, but um, I'm not feeling great today. I'm better, but I've been in bed for the last two days, and so I, what I was going to do was take you through the camper van today and just point out some stuff in case you're curious about camper vans. We have a Winnebago era and um, I just don't have it in me today. And for some reason my back is hurting and I don't have a bad back. Maybe it's because I've been sleep laying in bed for two days. And so I'm going to talk a little bit and I'm going to try to keep it short. Try. I'm going to talk about, okay, RVing is one of my favorite things, but maybe my favorite thing in the world is books. And I think books and traveling go together, at least in my mind they do. Well, books go with everything. But, um, so even if you're not an RVer. Anyway, I, um, I post my uh, books once I've read them on Goodreads. And at the end of the year, Goodreads um, tallies everything up. So I went through the books last night and I chose my top 10 for 2019 and I thought I'd share the titles with you. I won't go into a bunch of detail on that because I know I'll bore you, um, but I'll just give you a little snippet. So what I'll do is my top 10 books for 2019, um, I'll do them by the oldest publication date to the most current. <clears throat> because it's hard, once you whittle it down to 10, um, it's hard to say, oh, this was the number one, because you love them all. It's your top 10. Um, but uh, what did Goodreads, I think I've read 67 books this year. Um, I wasn't super committed in the beginning of the year to um, necessarily noting every book I read, and I wasn't reading as much. And then June came, and I'm like, I'm gonna read. Like, and I did. I read a lot. Like, I was averaging, I think, 10 books a month for the summer. Um, but um, so, yeah, let's just, I think it's 67. Uh, maybe I'll put my stats over here if you're a book nerd. I love seeing other people's stats. Not that it's a competition, but. Um, I, uh, so to do your top 10, I mean, that's significant. So yeah, just do it by publication year. Okay, I, I'm looking at my notes because I was in bed typing this up last night just for my own sake and then I thought I'd share it. Okay, so the oldest of my top 10 books comes from 1943, Betty Smith's A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. So I remember my mom, I'm not sure how old I was, but I feel like I was probably around 12 and I remember her telling, and my mom was a big reader. She read widely and often. <laughs> and um, I, uh, I remember her telling me to read A Tree Grows in Brooklyn and I never did. Um, and I'm kind of glad I didn't read it that young. One, I don't think I would have understood much to be honest, I'm, I was pretty naive and I kind of still am, but um, I mean, that book, like there are parts of that book that really I was just like emotionally, uh, I needed a moment several times in that book. Um, so real quickly, your fall, it's a coming of age story, obviously set in Brooklyn, a tree grows in Brooklyn. Uh, Francie is the main character and you know, she's she's got her little family, her mom, her dad, her brother, and and um, life's kind of difficult. It was a rough life. It's turn of the century, not uh, this past <laughs> turn, but the early 1900s. And um, and also, it was funny. I read this shortly after reading Educated by Tara Westover, and those are actually like a good read to do back to back. I mean, uh, Tara Westover's book came out, what, like one or two or three years ago, and A Tree Grows in Brooklyn came out in 1943. But um, the idea of education and what that means in someone's life, what that means in a female's life, I think mean, that's really good. Okay, the next oldest on my top 10 list comes from 1987, and it's Wallace Stegner's Crossing to Safety. I can't, <laughs> I can't even explain this book 
I can't explain why I was obsessed with it. I um, I listened to it on audiobook. Oh, by the way, A Tree Grows in Brooklyn, I also listened on audiobook, and then I bought the book because I'm like, I need this to be part of my library. So it's somewhere, A Tree Grows in Brooklyn is uh, somewhere on the shelf. Um, oh, there it is. Here, I'll show it to you real quick. And yes, I have pajama pants on because I'm sick, technically. I just put a bunch of makeup on to make me not look sick. So this is the copy I ended up getting, although, like I said, I originally listened to it on audiobook, and it was really good. So Crossing to Safety, I listened on audiobook, and I need to buy the hardback book because if it's in your top 10 list, it needs to be part of your library. Um, I read Angle of Repose years ago. That book's very special to me. I'll go into another, that story another time. Um, but Crossing to Safety, man. I, what I do if I'm not like driving, listening to an audiobook or cleaning, I knit. I don't know how to knit. I mean, I know the stitch, but I don't knit an item. I just knit because it helps me like stay focused, stay awake. So I did that through all of Crossing to Safety. I think I listened to it in two days. Um, he just, I can't even, like it's about two couples and it starts, I think, around the depression time and and then follows their lives. And I can't even explain why it's so wonderful, but it's so wonderful. I need to read it again. I feel like I'm missing some points, but it's just so beautifully written. Like I did not, I was sad when I had to leave my audiobook to like live real life. Um, it was that kind of book for me. And I've heard other people react very similarly. So yes, I'm I'm a little quirky, but other people have said this too. So, yeah. Okay, the next one was also an audio book. Um, I listened to The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, and that came out in 2012 by Rebecca Skloot. <sighs> that was another one. I think I cleaned, <laughs> like, the whole time I listened to that audio book, and I had a really clean house by the end. I think that was another two-day journey. <laughs> And um, if you don't know the story, I won't do it justice because it was quite a while ago that I listened to it, but Henrietta Lacks, her cells have, have been responsible for so many medical breakthroughs and um, it, the thing is, like, this was back in a time, I want to say the 50s, when like their, she and her family, they didn't know really medically they it, it people weren't informed like they are now by the doctors and everything and Henrietta unfortunately she died she had a she had cancer and she died very young and she had you know this large family and it's just it's their story and boy I mean that's a rough story um <laughs> but it was it was so good to listen to. Um, I need to listen to that again. I'm not the kind, I wish I were the kind of reader who got everything the first time. I'm not that person. I, I mean, I'm the person who can listen to something 10 times and every time it's like, whew, how, how did I miss that? I, I'm talking too long. If I'm going to get through this quickly, I got to uh, keep going. Okay. My next one is also from 2010, Amy Bender, who I never had even heard of before. And <laughs> then I read this book and then I looked her up and I watched a bunch of YouTube videos with interviews with her and she seems amazing. It's The Particular Sadness of Lemon Cake. Um, okay. So I listened to this on, uh, no, no, no. I read it from the overdrive system, you know, the library system where you get it free. And then I loved it so much. I bought that. So that's somewhere on this shelf too. Um, I should have pulled these ahead of time, but, um, okay. Now this book may not be for everyone, but this was my cup of tea. It had everything I love. It had beautiful writing. It had, like, I, I want to call it magical realism. I don't know if it's technically called magical realism, but magical things happen, and there's, you don't, like, they just do. And you need to be the kind of person to accept that, and I totally am. Like, I'm on board. You do your magical stuff. You don't need to explain everything to me. I work through it myself. Oh, I loved that. The particular sadness of lemon cake. In fact, 
really want to find the book because I want to show. Oh, here it is. Um, so good. <laughs> okay. Oh, all of these are so good. I'm saying the same thing over and over. Okay, the next one, 2012, my first Frederick Bachman book, um, A Man Called Uwe. I downloaded this on Audible years ago, years ago, like probably three years ago, because it was, there was so much buzz. Everyone talked about how great it was, and I just I just was never in the mood. I was never in the mood to listen to it. And um, again, okay, I do two things in my life. I read and I clean. So this was another cleaning day, and I'm like, today's the day. I'm going to at least give it a try. <sighs> Frederick Bachman is genius. If you're a big reader, you probably already know this. I had no idea. He's going to come up again in this top ten list. Um, <sighs> A man called Uwe. I'm just like, I don't want to listen to a story about an older man. Da da da. Like, what do I? <sighs> like, you learn. I mean, it's about life. That's what it's about. It's so good. Okay. All right. The next one is okay. I first read this in 2018, but I reread it actually twice because I ended up hosting a book club and using this for my book club book. Um, sorry, I just moved this. Um, and uh, so since I read it twice in 2019, I feel like I get to count it in my top 10 for 2019. And that book is The Quirky Little Miracle That Maria Semple Brought Into This World. It is so good. Where'd you go, Bernadette? Talk about quirky. I mean, I loved it. I used to live in Seattle. So I don't know how I'm not a Seattleite. I lived there, but only for a few years, um, not from there. I'd be interested to know what my friends from Seattle who are from there thought of the book. But um, where'd you go, Bernadette? Oh my goodness. When I was reading this, I was just like, I didn't even know you could write this way. Like that you can get away writing a novel like this. Um, like the novel is told through her daughter B's um, research into like emails and um, it's just, oh, man, it's just so good. If you like, I, I mean, I found it funny. I found Bernadette endearing. Now the movie came out this year in 2019 also. Um, the movie just, the movie's good, but oh, the book, it's so good. It's so funny. It's so witty. Um, Bernadette, she got, she just got some issues, but like I, I loved it. And her husband and her daughter, and then like this whole little mystery unfolds and you got to find out where'd you go, Bernadette? Anyway, okay. Um, the next one uh, came out in... Okay, 2017, Ruth Hogan is the author, and I think this is her first novel. I don't know if she's written any since then, and it's called The Keeper of Lost Things. Okay, of all the books on this list, this is probably like the least literary, the le you know, but you know how like sometimes it's just the right book at the right time. You are in the mood for exactly this kind of book. It is, um, it's poignant at times, which most of the books on my list are because I like to be ripped up a little inside when I'm reading. I want them to really get at my emotions. But it's not over. It's, it's much um, lighter of a book and yet has enough like depth to it that it made my top 10 list. I just found the story enchanting and cozy. It was like eating comfort food. You're reading comfort books. Um, it's it's I, I believe she's English. It's said it's said over there. And um, the main character uh, Andrew Perdu, he um, decades earlier he he was engaged and his fiance had given him a keepsake and he lost it on the street. And that very day she died, uh, Therese. And it just killed him that he had lost this thing that meant so much to her. So he spends the rest of his life picking up things on the streets that people have lost. 
And then he's nearing the end of his life. He's like, what am I going to do? I mean, he has this whole, hu he's an author. He has this whole huge office filled with all these things he's collected over the decades. So he has an assistant uh, named Laura and he leaves them to her. And then it's like, she's got to figure out what she's going to, how like he wants her to like find the people who these belong to. So there's that whole storyline going on. But then you find out like, you know, there's a barrette that was picked up and then he tell the author, she tells what was the real story behind the barrette being left. And so they do that with a lot of these items. And it's just, I just found it enchanting. It was charming, had a little romance. Um, it just, it was, it was fun, fun. I listened to it. It was an audio book from the library. Okay. My next one, okay, this is uh, 2017. This may be my favorite of all the top 10. Oh, it's so good. Okay, it's Frederick Bachman again. So the man, the the uh, the author who wrote A Man Called Uwe. It's Bear Town. Do you guys know this book? Um, where's my Bear Town? So I listened to this on audio during a drive, um, during a drive. And then I, I had to own it. Actually, I see my copy over there. I'm going to go get it really quickly. <sighs> Have you guys read this? Okay, it came out, what did I say, 2017? I had no idea. I don't feel like I'm in the know much. <laughs> I'm getting better, though. Um, oh, geez. This is... Mm. It's kind of a difficult read. I mean, one of the main events that happen in the story, I won't tell you what it is, but it's, it's, it's bad. It's uh, tragic. And then the repercussions of it. Anyway, Frederick Bachman, I don't remember if I said this before, he, he's Swedish. So this is set in Sweden. This is translated, same with a man called Uwe. Um, and it's in this little town called Beartown in Sweden, deep in the forest, and um, it's a hockey town. And you do not need to like hockey. You do not need to like sports. That is not what this book is about. Even though, like, yes, hockey is probably written in here like a zillion times, but it is not a sports book. It is a humanity book. It is, oh, it's gorgeous. I want to go through this again. Um, again, I listened to it in audiobook, and so I'm going to go through it and just annotate it, every beautiful line that Frederick Bachman writes. Okay, two more. Um, the next one is 2018. The author is Anne Youngson, and it's Meet Me at the Museum. Where did I hear about this one? I think I heard it on The Modern Mrs. Darcy. Um, oh, if you don't listen to that... Um, it's called What Should I Read Next, the podcast. Oh, so good. I've heard of some of these books from that. Meet me at the museum. Again, if you are looking for a charming book, but that is so well written. I mean, you know, it's not this is happening and this is happening. It's just quiet and beautiful. Oh, if you just like to read wonderful writing, and a beautiful little story, and you don't need all these bells and whistles, get Meet Me at the Museum. It's a short little book. Uh, I think I read this in an evening. Um, it's so good. Okay. Okay, so then the last one of my 10 for 10. And again, I did these in order of when they were released. So I started with a 1943 book, and this one was released in 2019. Oh, it's one of the most beautiful covers you will see. Do you know what it is? The Dutch House by Ann Patchett. Oh. Okay, so I love Ann Patchett. Um, I've read lots of her books. I still have a few more to get through her, her whole thing. Do you know about Ann Patchett? Like, she's, if you ever, if you ever get the chance to see her in person, do a, a talk, you go. You don't think about it. You get the ticket. You go, um, which I did, which means she signed my book. Um, but I first listened to it again on a drive, Road Reads, um, and it's uh, narrated by Tom Hanks, which is kind of weird, but then you get used to it, and most people just love his narration. Um, this is the 
best Ann Patchett book, in my opinion, that I've read. Um, this is her latest book, and in my opinion, it's her best book. Um, oh, the story. <sighs> Again, I was excited for her latest book, but it's about a house. I mean, it's called The Dutch House. I mean, it's not about a house. It's about people, but it's also about a house. And I'm like, the last thing I want to read about is a house, you know, after all the... <laughs> We built a house and it's taken like a zillion years and it's still not done. So I'm like, why would I want to read a book about a house? But it's Ann Patchett and I don't think I've heard anyone not like this book. Um, if this would probably be my, if Fairtown is my favorite, this is right behind it. Um, but it's a story of a family. It's a story of a brother and a sister. I have six brothers, but um, this is a brother and a sister and a house and I won't go into more detail, man. You can read so many things online, but I would say don't read the things online. Just read the book. She did. Ugh. Anyway. Um, oh, man. I've already talked 21 minutes, and i got to learn how to edit. <laughs> anyway. Whew, those are my favorite books of 2019. I would love to hear what your favorite books of 2019 are. If you can hear me, Alan, that's because I shut my office door. And Henry is sad about that. But anyway, um, 2020 is going to be a great uh, year reading. I already know it. I feel it in my bones. Um, if you're a big reader, I would love to hear your comments below about what you're, you loved in 2019 and what you're looking forward to in 2020. Anyway, Happy New Year, everyone. And next time, um, who knows what the next video will be, but it will probably be RV related. And I'll talk to you then. Bye.